Thank you, Sam. Hello, everyone. My name is Vavo Singh. I work with BMC Discovery Support Team. I'm specialized in discovery, Helix discovery, as well as integration between discovery and other products. I welcome you all to this two parts webinar series on BMC discovery and BMC Helix CMDB integration. In the part one, that is today's session, I will cover the basics of this integration. And in the part two, we will take a deep dive into troubleshooting data inconsistency between discovery and CMDB, log analysis, and customizations related to this integration. Watching both the parts of this webinar series will cover end-to-end -end detail that one should know about this integration. Let's start with our agenda for today. First, we will understand how the Discover data is stored in Discovery and how the CIs and relationship data is stored in CMDB. We will then look at end-to-end -end data flow in IT operations and service management. Specific to this integration, we will talk about prerequisite, CDM mapping, local shadow copy, sync services, logs, connection type, and a detailed step-by-step -step process of this integration. Let's start with an introduction to BMC Discovery. BMC Discovery is an agentless discovery solution that discovers data center asset configuration and relationship data. It also provides ways to model our business applications and the capability to sync the discovered data to CMDBs like BMC Helix CMDB, ServiceNow CMDB, and Remedy4 CMDB. Discovery uses built-in Barclay Data Store to store the discovered data, relationship, and other details. This data store stores simple pair of binary keys and values. All the user visible behavior of the discovery data store, such as nodes, relationship, search languages, and so on, are implemented by BMC. Barclay DB manages a collection of data store files which will be in Discovery Data Store file system. These files contains data entries in B3 data structure. Now, let's have a quick look at what is BMC Helix CMDB and how the CIs and relationship data is stored in CMDB. BMC Helix CMDB or BMC Configuration Management Database helps you source, store, monitor, and manage the data related to configuration items like IT hardware and software, printers, servers, air condition, and so on, including the relationship among them. In simple terms, a CMDB stores all the CI's data that helps you understand your environment better. BMC Helix CMDB uses common data model to store the CI's and relationship data. The common data model is the set of configuration items and relationship classes that are shipped with BMC Helix CMDB. These classes represent the physical, logical, and the conceptual items of an IT environment that you want to track in a CMDB. Now that we have understood what is BMC Discovery and what is BMC Helix CMDB, let's talk about how these two can help you manage end-to-end -end data flow for your IT operations and service management. Let's say you have an IT environment with configuration items and relationship, and to discover these details, you will use BMC Discovery or some other discovery solutions or data providers. Once the CI data and relationship has been discovered by these discovery solutions, the discovered data can be imported to BMC Helix CMDB import data sets. An import data set of BMC Helix CMDB contains the data in its unprocessed form, and it cannot be used for IDIL processes unless the data is normalized and reconciled. Once the data has been imported to all the import data sets, the first thing you would need to do is to run a normalization. Normalization is a process of applying standards or regulation as defined in your product catalog entries. The normalization engine standardizes, corrects, and clean up the data that comes from various discovery sources. An example would be correcting the name 
and version of a software based on the product catalog entry for that particular software CI. Once the data has been normalized, you would need to reconcile the data. Reconciliation is the process in which data from different discovery sources is checked and corrected to maintain the consistency while making sure there is no duplication of data. Once the data has been reconciled, it will be available into production or asset data set from where the CI and relationship data can be used by ITIL processes such as asset management. In coming slides, we are going to understand BMC Discovery to BMC Helix CMDB integration in details and how Discovery imports or sync the data to its own import data set. Let's start with the prerequisite for this integration. First of all, you will need a supported CMDB. List of all supported BMC Helix CMDB are documented in BMC Discovery documentation. All BMC Helix CMDB comes with a default import data set named bmc.addm which can be used to sync data from BMC Discovery. Though the import data set bmc.addm is available by default in BMC Helix CMDB, you would still need to configure a recon job for this particular data set. Next, you would need a CMDB user which will be used for this integration. This user should at least be part of a CMDB group which is having CMDB data change all rule. Next, let's talk about CDM mapping. While talking about discovery data store, I mentioned that the discovered data is stored in B3 data structure. Whereas the CMDB uses common data model where we have classes to store different, different types of CI data. So if we want to sync discovered data into the CMDB, the data first has to be converted into common data model. The process of converting the discovered data into common data model is known as CDM mapping. Let's take an example to understand this. Say in discovery, we have a host named host1 and we have other details about this host discovered and stored. For example, the host is running Windows 2012 operating system. It has a software named ABC and it is running Intel based processor. Now if we sync this data into the CMDB, here is how it is going to look. The host CIE information will go to computer system class, whereas the operating system information will go to BMC underscore operating system class. The software node that is there in the discovery will get synced to the BMC underscore software server class in CMDB and the processor information will go to BMC underscore processor class. So looking at these two data model, we can clearly see that the data conversion has to be done at the discovery end before it is sent to the CMDB. And as I said, the process of converting the discovered data into common data model is known as CDM mapping. Let's take a demo here to see where you can find more details about CDM mapping. The first place where you can find more details about CDM mapping is BMC Discovery documentation. When you go to the BMC Discovery documentation and search with the keyword CDM mapping, you will see different different pages for different different nodes in Discovery. The reason why we have dedicated pages for all these types of nodes like host, network devices, cloud is because these nodes are considered as root node in discovery. In discovery, the CDM mapping or the synchronization process always starts from root node. Few examples of the root nodes are host, network devices, printer, SNMP managed devices, storage system, cloud services, etc. So for all these root nodes, you will find a dedicated page in BMC discovery documentation. Now let's say we want to understand how the discovered host or server information will be mapped to the CMDB. We can check the CDM mapping doc for the host. So let's go there and see what all details we can find. On the right side of this page, you will see all the different classes of CMDB where the host or server details will be mapped. For example, in BMC underscore computer system, we will have server specific detail. But if we scroll down, we will see information about other classes like BMC operating system, 
where the operating system details of the server will be mapped. Similarly, if we keep going down, we will find information about other classes like BMC underscore processor, BMC underscore cluster, BMC underscore IP endpoints. And all these classes will have respective information that has been discovered by discovery. Another place from where you can find more information about CDM mapping is BMC Discovery UI. As you may know, BMC Discovery gets monthly TKU update, which include sync mapping patterns. And the sync mapping patterns are responsible for doing the CDM mapping or syncing the data into the CMDB. So if we go to the Manage Knowledge page and scroll down and open all the TKU patterns, from here, we can navigate to the CMDB sync related patterns and we will see sections about all the root nodes that I mentioned. Similar to what we did in the BMC discovery documentation, we can expand or go inside the root node to find the details that is being mapped to the CMDB. For example, if I expand the section about host, I can see all the patterns and how the discovery data is being mapped to different different CMDB classes. For example, if we open the database related pattern and scroll down, we will see the exact mapping that we saw in the documentation. As you can see from this mapping, the left side attributes are our CMDB attributes and the right side attributes are our discovered discovery attributes. We can check the other patterns and we will find a similar mapping. For example, if we go and check the computer system pattern, we will see how the server related details are being mapped to BMC underscore computer system class. Similarly, for the operating system class, we can see the mapping of the operating system details into the CMDB. So from the CDM mapping documentation or the sync mapping patterns, we can easily identify how the discovered details are being mapped to the BMC Helix CMDB. Now let's talk about local shadow copy. The concept of local shadow copy was introduced from Discovery 10.2 release. Before 10.2, during each synchronization, Discovery had to connect and query CMDB directly to determine the current state of a CI. And that used to increase the overall sync timing. From Discovery 10.2, Discovery creates a local shadow copy for each CMDB connection. In the shadow copy, Discovery maintains a copy of the data that has been synced to the CMDB in the import data set. This allows Discovery to quickly determine the CI current state by checking the CI data locally in the shadow copy without having to connect to the CMDB. Also, whenever a CI sync is triggered in Discovery, Discovery compares the CI data with the stored CI data in the shadow copy. This helps Discovery to determine whether there is any change in the CI data from the data that has been synced to the CMDB in the past. If there are no change, Discovery will not update the CI data into the CMDB because there is nothing new that needs to be updated. This approach helps Discovery to improve the overall sync performance also, the shadow copy becomes very important whenever we are troubleshooting data inconsistency between discovery and CMDB. Now let's talk about how exactly the integration between discovery and CMDB works. Say you have an environment where you have servers, devices, storage system, or other types of CIs that you want to track in CMDB. The first thing that you need to do is to discover all these CI information. And for that, you will deploy BMC Discovery Appliance. Though the BMC Discovery Appliance has the capability to discover all types of CIs, in most cases, you will deploy BMC Discovery Outpost because these CIs could be located in segregated networks. These outposts will connect to the BMC Discovery Appliance and pick up any scanning request or discovery request that is initiated by either a discovery user or through some API calls. The outpost will then connect to these CIs or endpoints and perform the scanning and capture the details and transfer that detail to the discovery appliance 
where it will be stored in the Barclay data store that we talked about. Once the CI data has been discovered, it can be synced to the CMDB. The discovery to CMDB sync happens in five stages. Let's talk about each stage in details. As I mentioned earlier, the CMDB synchronization process always starts from a root node. So the first stage would be selecting a root node. And this happens automatically. And as I mentioned earlier, few examples of the root nodes are host, network devices, storage system, etc. Once a root node has been selected, discovery will populate something called as source subgraph in stage two, where it will find all the discovered information about that particular root node. In the next stage, CDM mapping comes into the picture, where the source subgraph is converted into a target subgraph using the sync mapping patterns. So basically, in this stage, the discovered data will be converted into common data model. In the fourth stage, shadow copy comes into the picture. Because this is where discovery uses the shadow copy to compare the target subgraph that was prepared in stage three with the target subgraph of the CI that has been stored in the shadow copy from the previous sync. After comparing these two subgraphs, if discovery identifies that there is a change in the CI data, that change will be synced to the CMDB in the import data set by default, which is bmc.addm. And also the changes will be updated in the local shadow copy so that this shadow copy has the updated subgraph for future sync. And as we discussed when we talked about data flow, once the data has been imported into the import data set, you will normalize and reconcile that data into the production or bmc.asset data set. Once the data is available in bmc.asset or production data set, it can be used by IDL processes or other consumers. Now let's talk about the integration connection types that we have available to integrate these two products together. The first option is CMDB REST API and the second option is CMDB Legacy API. The CMDB REST API connection type is the new one and the recommended approach when integrating these two products together. Let's quickly talk about the connection type that you can use when integrating on-prem as well as Helix deployments of these products. There are four types of deployments that you could have. The first one is where both discovery and CMDB is deployed on-prem that is within your network. To integrate on-prem deployments of these two products, you can use either the REST API or the CMDB API types of connection. The next deployment possibility is that both of these products are deployed in BMC Helix or cloud deployment. In that case, to integrate these products, you will have to use the REST API type of connection. The third possibility is that you have BMC discovery deployed on-prem while the CMDB is deployed in BMC Helix. In that case, to integrate discovery with CMDB, you can use REST API as well as CMDB API. To use the REST API, you either have option to provide the internet access on the discovery appliance, or while creating the CMDB connection, you get the option to add the HTTP proxy details so that appliance can access the Helix CMDB through REST API. If for some reason you don't want to use REST API type of connection to connect your on-prem discovery to Helix CMDB, you can choose to go with CMDB legacy API using an utility Helix client gateway. The fourth and the last possibility is that you have Helix discovery and the CMDB running in your on-prem. In that case, the only available option is to use REST API. And to use REST API, you would need to expose your CMDB REST API over the internet. Next, let's talk about discovery services that controls the overall sync process and the logs that you can check when troubleshooting sync related problems. On the discovery appliance, there are two services named transformer and exporter that controls the overall sync process. The transformer service is mainly responsible for transforming the discovered data into the common data model, whereas the exporter service plays a role in exporting the data or syncing the data to the CMDB. If you want to check the status of these services, you can do that by either running 
tw underscore service underscore control hyphen hyphen status command which provides the status of all the services and in the output as you can see in the screenshot you will also get the status of these two services in case you need to check the status or start or stop one of these services you can also do that by using the specific service name with tw underscore service underscore control utility as you can see in the screenshot I'm using the specific service name that is cmdb underscore sync underscore transformer or underscore exporter to check the status of these individual services. Related to cmdb sync, we have three logs available on the discovery appliance. The first one is tw underscore exporter underscore connection underscore test dot log, which contains the logs generated when you test the discovery and cmdb connection. The next log is tw underscore svc underscore cmdb sync underscore transformer dot log, which contains the logs generated by the sync mapping pattern. So basically the details about how the discovered data is being converted into the common data model. In addition to the sync mapping patterns log, the transformer logs also contains overall sync process details if you are using cmdb rest API type of connection. The third log is tw underscore svc underscore cmdb sync underscore exporter dot log which contains the details about the export process if you are using cmdb legacy api type of connection let's take a demo here we will see how to configure discovery to cmdb connection and we will talk about all the available options that we have on the integration page to create the integration connection between BMC Discovery and CMDB, log into the Discovery UI. Once logged in, click on the administration icon. And from the administration page, click on the CMDB sync. On the CMDB sync page, click on add CMDB connection. And the first thing that we need to specify is a name for this integration connection. You can name it anything but it is recommended to give a meaningful name that helps you recognize the connection right away. For example, I'm going to give it a name like demo CMDB. Next, we have to select a connection type. And as I mentioned, CMDB REST API type of connection is the recommended connection type and that is selected out of the box. So we will leave it as it is and we will move on to the next option, which is adding the REST API URL. I'm going to add the URL for one of my lab CMDB server. Next, we have to add the username and the password. For the HTTP proxy details, I'm going to keep it blank, but let's say if you are integrating on-prem discovery with the Helix CMDB and your discovery appliance doesn't have internet access, then you can configure HTTP internet proxy details so that discovery appliance can connect to the CMDB REST API over the internet. Next, let's see what all options we have. Continuous sync is not selected out of the box, but I'm going to select this one because this allows discovery to automatically send CI data into the CMDB whenever there is a change. But if you don't want discovery to keep on sending automatic update into the CMDB, you can deselect this option. Discovery has the capability to sync data into CMDB in batches and the default batch size is 100. It is not recommended to increase this value as that may lead to some performance issue on the CMDB side. Next is the number of concurrent workers, which is by default set to one, but you can increase this value up to 20. Depending on the number specified here, Discovery will assign number of concurrent workers to process the CMDB sync. For the data set ID, by default, as I mentioned, we have a data set bmc.addm available out of the box in CMDB. So that value is automatically populated when you go and try to add a CMDB connection. But just to show you that you can have some other data set to sync the discovery details, I'm going to change this data set to a custom data set that I created in my lab CMDB. Data model, we will go with standard impact. If your CMDB has multi-tenancy configured, then you can enable that and then click on get companies to get a list of all companies and from there you can choose a default company my cmdb doesn't have a multi-tenancy enabled so i will just go and disable this option once you have entered all these details let's do a test connection to see whether we are able to connect to the cmdb or not and as we can see the connection test is successful now scroll down and click on add to add this connection into the discovery 
The connection is now added and active. Let's go inside this connection and talk about other details or other configurations that we have available. Inside the connection, the first tab is about details, which is nothing but the details that we have entered while creating this connection and we have already gone through these details. So let's move on to the next tab that is filtering. From this tab, you can define filters to filter the sync of particular types of CIs, either based on their node type in discovery or based on their class type in CMDB. If you want to filter CIs based on their node type in discovery, then scroll down and from here you can select the root node type of the CI and then add other criteria to improve your filter. If you want to filter CI sync based on their CMDB classes, then click on the CMDB tab on the filtering tab, scroll down and select the CMDB class that you want to filter. After that, you can add other criteria to improve your filter. Next, we have blackout window. While creating the CMDB connection, if you have selected continuous sync option, then as I said, whenever there is a change on the CI available, discovery will automatically send that change to the CMDB. But if you want to block the automatic update on the CIs through continuous sync process, then you can define a blackout window and define the timing in which discovery will not make any changes on the CI in CMDB. The next tab is about resync. In some rare cases, the sync data into the import data set in CMDB goes out of sync with the discovered data or the data in the discovery shadow copy. To fix this kind of data inconsistency in one go, discovery provides the option of resync. Resync happens in three stages. In the first stage, discovery creates or builds the local shadow copy. In the second stage, it compares the data in the shadow copy with the data that has been sent to the CMDB into the import data set. And in the last stage, which is commit, if discovery identifies any inconsistency when comparing the local shadow copy data and the import data set data, it will update those changes into the CMDB. There are three types of resync available, complete resync, incremental resync, and prepare only. In the complete resync, all three stages of the resync will happen in one go. That is, discovery will prepare the local shadow copy. It will compare the data of the local shadow copy with the data that is there in the import data set. It will identify the data inconsistency or the difference and it will make the changes right away in the CMDB. During the entire process of the complete resync, your CMDB connection will be blocked and your normal sync operation will be put on hold. If you don't want to block your CMDB connection while the resync is happening, you can go with the incremental resync in which the first two stages will happen right away. That is creating the local shadow copy and comparing the data with the import data set data. But the third stage, which is committing the data into the CMDB will happen over the time as you scan your infra. The third type of the resync that is prepared only is for the users to examine the changes that will be sent to the CMDB if they go with the complete or incremental resync. So to conclude, you only need to run a resync when you identify a data inconsistency issue between discover data and the data that has been synced to the CMDB. The last tab here is the status tab where you see the status of the CMDB sync, including details like how many devices are in the queue that has to be sent to the CMDB, how many devices has been inserted and any errors that happened while syncing a particular CI into the CMDB. Now let's take a host CI and sync that into the CMDB and then we will log in into the CMDB to see how the data is looking there. I have already opened a host. So let's go to actions and sync to CMDB. Let's go back to our status page and see the status of this sync of the CI. As we can see, now we have a value in devices inserted equals to one and we can see the status of this CI sync. Now let's go to the CMDB portal and see the CI details there. I've already logged into the CMDB portal. First, let's select the data set that we used for the integration. From all the available data set, I can see the data set, the custom data set that we have used during the integration. Let's select that one. And let's search the entire BMC underscore computer system class because the server CI that we have synced from discovery should come under this particular class. And from the result, we can see that CI that we have synced from discovery is now available in the CMDB in our import data set in BMC underscore computer system class. 
Similarly, we can go inside other classes like operating system, IP endpoints, and see the detail of what Discovery has sent. This concludes the demo on how to create Discovery to CMDB connection. Let's look at the summary of what we discussed today. We talked about what is BMC Discovery and what is BMC Helix CMDB. We also talked about the Discovery Data Store and the data model used by Helix CMDB. We discussed the end-to-end -end data flow in your IT operations and service management. We talked about CDM mapping and why it is required. For integrating these two products, we looked into the prerequisite services, logs, detailed steps of the integration and the connection types. And we saw how to configure the integration from the Discovery UI. This concludes the part one of BMC Discovery and BMC Helix CMDB integration webinar. I hope to see you all in the part two of this webinar series. Thank you very much for attending this session.